is uh, a rather different approach, a rather different topic, as you can see. And this is influenced by, uh, uh, by my uh, love for computational mechanics and the fact that, uh, as an engineer, I like uh, crunching numbers. Uh, if I cannot associate something with numbers, I'm not happy. <coughs> And uh, uh, we, uh, I was trying to, uh, to study uh, homogenization, uh, equivalence of composites with, uh, and in doing that, I found, I discovered that uh, everything, uh, whatever you like to, to make with the homogenization, at a certain point, you face the problem of evaluating this special tensor that is, is a famous tensor, that is the Escherby tensor, and uh, uh, of this famous uh, physician, engineer, English engineer, which uh, rather strangely was never, was never uh, clearly computed. I mean, there was not a, in my opinion, efficient way to compute this even in the two-dimensional case. And in the three-dimensional case, this was even more complicated and strange. <coughs> so basically, uh, just to give an overview, if you don't know, basically these, uh, uh, these tensors allows you to uh, take into account the effect of a, uh, an inclusion within an hosting medium. So you have an infinite medium with some condition, stress or strain condition at, um, at infinite. You have an inclusion, uh, so you have a medium with one uh, property, C1, well, elastic tensor, another material, a small inclusion, C2, and basically you have to transform every, everything in one medium, C1, in which you have to take into account the presence of this inclusion. And you make this by mm, concentrating in this geometric small inclusion a, uh, a quantity, a, an equivalent strain tensors, that is obtained from the strain tensors that you apply at infinite by means of a special tensor, which is the so-called Eshelby tensor. So if you want to make this, and on the basis of this, you evaluate the so-called concentration tensors, and you apply some formulas to get the overall properties of your uh, equivalent medium, you have to compute this tensor in some way. You find, this, you find formulas, because Eshelby proved that this tensor is constant if your inclusion has not a generic shape as this one, but as an elliptical shape. If you have an inclusion which is an ellipsoid or an ellipse in 2D case, the, this tensor is constant within the inclusion, and this, the concentration tensor, the strain concentration tensor, is constant within the inclusion. My concern was to evaluate uh, the, to compute the, the Escherby tensor for arbitrary shape of the inclusion, because of course you find this actually in the, especially in the industrial field. But the price you have to pay is that in that case, the tensor is not constant within the inclusion. But this is not a real problem. It, can become a real problem if you want to associate this tensor that is defined point-wise between the inclusion with a constant tensor that in some way recreates a sort of equivalent ellipsoid that has properties similar to the one you have evaluated point-wise. But let us go on just to be a little bit clearer. Okay. So I will skip all this, and I will just, uh, this is the, the 
Escher be equivalent principle, the meaning is that I replace the real continuum C2 with a, the same continuum, the same properties, elastic properties of the Austin medium, but the price you have to pay is that you have to insert within your uh, uh, inclusion Another tensor that you evaluate in this way. This tensor, I repeat, is constant. You have, if this is an ellipsoid, it depends, it varies point-wise, it changes point-wise if the shape is arbitrary. And this concept is very useful, it's very often applied to model cracks in fracture mechanics, faults, magmatic chambers, uh, aquifers, and of course, we, we did not make this application. I was, uh, as I told you, uh, I crunched numbers, so I, I want to understand how to compute them. These are other applications. You have contact boundary condition, analytic effects in elastic contact, tumoral tissues, and of course, homogenization techniques in mechanics of composites. So, mm, let us see how it is defined, this Escher B tensor. It has the so-called minor symmetries on the first and the second pair of indices. It does not have the, uh, the major symmetry as the classical elastic tensor. Basically, to evaluate this tensor, you have to compose with the elastic tensor of the, com of the Austin medium the derivative of the green function of your material. So this is the main of the inclusion. G is the green operator of the 3D elasticity. And as I told you, C is the elastic stiffness tensor of the Austin medium. This is the expression you find in books, uh, many of them with a lot of mistakes. For the case of uh, a sphere, you get, as you see, constant values depending on the Poisson ratio. And you find other expression, especially in the, in the book by Mura, with the four cylindrical inclusions, penny-shaped inclusion, needle inclusion, just because they can be derived by, uh, from the solution related to the uh, ellipsoidal one. These are some references, probably the one we, that tried to make the best was this Rodin, uh, published in JMPS uh, a, a paper, and uh, uh, very interesting is this last paper, because uh, it addresses the SLP problem of non-elliptical non inclusion, the same problem as mine, and uh, he exploited a complex uh, approach, I mean complex because it was rather complex and used uh, complex analysis, but, but the importance of this work uh, lies in the fact that uh, he uh, tries to, uh, he succeeds in uh, uh, providing an effective way to compute from the SLB tensor, which is defined point-wise within your inclusion, a, an equivalent, unique expression of the SLB tensor that is a sort of average of the point-wise tensor, of the tensors that are defined, the SLP tensors that are defined point-wise within the inclusion. And this is very fine, it's very fine. I appreciate it very much. Okay, so I gives you just the idea. I do not dwell on details because it is just uh, mathematics and it is a, a wise application of the Gauss theorem. The, uh, the main result is to derive a formula of this tensor that depends explicitly upon the position vectors of the vertices of this polyhedron. So, in your mind, you have to remember that I have polyhedron. This polyhedron is defined by a number at certain points with 3D coordinates, some facets that connect this point. As a function of, this, of the coordinates of this point, I, gives you, I give you the explicit expression of the, of the tensor. How? I have to integrate over the domain of the inclusion. I transform this integral uh, 
by applying twice the Gauss theorem. First, I integrate over the facets the boundary of the inclusion, the domain, and then I integrate over each edge of each facet that represents your inclusion. So the main concern of the paper is how to make this. The first application is, is uh, simple because you have just a, a gradient here. So you take one, the you discard one derivative and you include the normal, the unit normal to the boundary. And this is so you are making now an integration of uh, the one, the generic phase of your boundary. And you have to compute some integral related to the phases. Of course, I just give you the ideas. If you make some computations, basically you have to compute these two integrals, boundary over the phases. Please take notice of the fact that this vector, our vector, is a three-dimensional vector. It's the vectors that defines the generic point of your face starting from the origin of your reference frame. But now you want to make a further step because you want to further simplify this integral. You want to integrate over the boundary, over the lines, the edges that define the generic face. And hence, you have to switch from a 3D representation of points to a 2D, a local definition of points, defined on each face. That's why, that's why, these are formulas, that's why, that's why you have, and to emphasize this point, in the, I have written the same integrals before by uh, making explicitly appear the, the subscript f to remind you of the phases. And at this point, you, you switch from the 3D representation to the, 1D, uh, to the 2D representation, basically in which way you define the 3D vectors as a sum of these two 3D vectors. One is directly related to the normal to the phase, and df is the distance of the generic point from the face. And this is rho in, uh, is a two-dimensional vector which moves on the faces. And you have this uh, operator that transforms the 2D vector to the 3D one. So thanks to this uh, definition, you are basically, you have to make this two integrations. You see, two-dimensional domain, two-dimensional vector, and you have to evaluate this integral. You can do that by a further application of the <coughs> Gauss theorem, but the most important part of the fact are not, of course, the manipulations, but the fact that when uh, applying the Gauss theorem, it naturally appears, it naturally appears, these are the, the formulas I developed, so the main problem is this, when you apply the, the, the Gauss theorem, it naturally appears this integral, that is a sort of Dirac delta applied to the this integral means if the, the raw vector is inside, if the point of integration is inside your domain, this integral is zero. Otherwise, if it is on the boundary, you have to evaluate a, an additional term that is exactly similar to the one that appears in the boundary element method. And uh, this is the this is the, the definition. As you see, this integral, for instance, is uh, if you have df0 and you, the raw vector, the origin of the, the local reference frame, the reference frame you introduce 
on each phase to make the integration in the 2D domain, if you have a, the origin of the 2D domain within uh, your phase, and this is zero, you have a singularity. Okay? But luckily, you have this sort of uh, annihilation terms that makes you establish that if rho zero belongs to the phase, basically, you have that this integral is zero, and uh, this, uh, excuse me, not this integral, but the divergence is zero, and all this integral is zero. Otherwise, if the, the rho is zero, and uh, the, the zero vector, the origin of your two-dimensional frame, does belong to the, uh, the outside, uh, is, uh, is, sorry, is inside the, the, your domain, Basically, you have to multiply the value of, of the integrand at 0 by 2 pi, where is 2 pi is basically the, this angle. Of course, if you are here, you multiply phi at evaluated, evaluated at 0 by pi. And if you are the corner, you evaluate by this angle. So this is the, this, represent, this represented one of the main contributions to understand some strange results that were reported in the, in the literature. And uh, of course, you can do the same for the other integral. And uh, I show you very rapidly some numerical examples just to show that our analytical results were perfectly coincident with uh, uh, others obtained basically by numerical integration. Apart from uh, some positions, some uh, uh, delicate position of the points of integration, the points at which you want to evaluate the uh, Escher bit tensor just, be, just due to this uh, uh, singularity that was hidden in the, in the formulation. Okay? And uh, uh, luckily, the PhD student that was that has made this computation went away and uh, began to work because this formulation can be easily extended to more refined uh, elastic media, gradient one. Uh, in that case, you can define different uh, forms, different expression, of course, of the Escher tensor, but also, of course, in that case, you have some additional problems that can be, in any case, uh, solved quite easily by means of this approach. I also, I, I made all the computations, but unfortunately no one implemented the formulas in, in a computer. So this is an open problem, an open uh, issue to address. And that's all, thank you very much. crystals with heavy protons, you can break the crystal by local uh, fracture. So it's uh, very promising. Uh, it could be applied also in that in that field. Thank you. Of, know that. of course, nobody studied uh, this problem with the Escher detensor, but my idea is that it could be studied by using the Escher detensor. If there are no more questions, please leave on.